When I was extremely upset about the run-up to the Iraq War and how it was being accomplished, I was thinking, how can I respond at this moment in a way that would give me a voice? And I knew that the, the strongest voice I had was through art. So I had to respond with art, but I didn't want to paint angry art. I wanted to do something positive with my own anger and my own grief about where we were going. But I couldn't think what that would be. And one day I was just pacing around the studio I'm sitting in right now and looked up at the wall. And on the wall I had pinned years ago a quote from Walt Whitman about how to live is Walt Whitman's commandment. This is what you shall do. You know, love the earth, the sun, and the animals. Argue not concerning God. Take your hat off to nothing known or unknown. And all these things that he was saying that are necessary for a good life. And I looked at those words and I thought, I'll, I'll paint a portrait of Walt Whitman. I'll scratch those words into him. And then the next thing I said was, I will feel better. I knew that if I could associate myself, come into contact with Walt Whitman, probably this country's greatest Democrat, that's small d, Democrat, in the sense that he believed that all creatures um, living, uh, you know, whether they're plants or animals or human beings, are essentially equal and necessary. Um, you know, the, the most important kind of democracy that we can embrace. I will, if I can get into contact with Walt Whitman, I'll feel better. I went to the library, found all sorts of books, uh, found pictures, read biographies, realized how I wanted to paint him, painted his portrait, stuck it on the wall downstairs. The first thing that happened was two people came in the house, stood in front of the painting, and burst into tears. And it wasn't because it was a great painting. It wasn't because it was a terrible painting. The reason they felt that way is they had the same nostalgia, the same sense of nostalgia that I did for what was missing from this country. And they found it embodied in Walt Whitman and his words. A few days later, I was um, again ranting about where this country was going. And my wife, Gail, said to me, you know, you were a nice guy while you were painting that portrait. Why don't you paint another one? And I just looked at her and I had this epiphany. And I said, you're right. I'm going to paint 50 portraits. I'm going to call them Americans who tell the truth. And then I'm going to give them all away. And I felt as though I had levitated. I felt that I had connected my life with some kind of uh, sense of purpose that uh, I had never quite felt before. And I knew that it, an essential part of that was that I was going to do this work however long it took, but I was also going to give it away. That it was no money connected directly with it. That I was, in a sense, hiring myself for free to do this work. I mean, and the, the, you know, because I, I, I knew one of the first painters, portraits I would paint would be Frederick Douglass. And I, I think I had already intuited that there would be something wrong with selling Frederick Douglass. That this had to be done for free to make a point about all these people who had given their lives, their time, sometimes their very lives, you know, to try to insist that this country live up to its own ideals.